If you want to hit a big overhead, your technique's got to be solid. But unfortunately, most amateur tennis players go about it all the wrong way. And in this lesson, I'm going to give you some really simple drills that you can do in your driveway to completely overhaul your swing technique to make it powerful and make it possible to be able to spike a ball over the back fence like what I just did. Most players cannot do that because they approach their overhead with a pushing type motion. Their racket face opens and they might hit it hard, but it goes really straight. And so they make a lot of errors uh, deep because their approach is a, very, is a very forward one. High level players know how to spike the ball by snapping the racket head, but that whole snap thing is completely different than what most players assume. So let's get right into the drills because they're gonna show you how to do it correctly. Here's how to learn how to snap the racket head properly on an overhead. If you're excited about that, do me a favor, click the like button. It really helps out these lessons a lot. So first things first, we're gonna start in a continental grip. If you don't know what that is, we have lots of other lessons about grip. I'm not gonna explain it here. It's a hammer grip or a chopper grip, whatever you wanna call it. And initially, I would, I would really strongly encourage you to just practice tapping the ball on the ground. You can do this at home or on the court, wherever and just practice finding the edge of the racket. Because when you watch slow motion video of a good overhead, you'll see the edge of the racket comes up first. It's not the strings coming up first. This is a pushing motion as opposed to a pulling motion. So here we're getting familiar with that pulling and edge position, which is what this needs to start with if you're ever going to fence an overhead and actually spike it powerfully. So once you get comfortable with that, what I recommend you do is practice going edge, edge, strings. And what I'm doing here to present my strings to the court is I'm turning my shoulder, my forearm, and my hand so that as my racket comes up on edge, it's transitioning to the strings turning and coming down. And what we're really kind of practicing here is this transition from an edge position or a pull position to a flush position. And so what we're doing is kind of imagining we're coming down on top of the ball maybe a couple times on the edge, and then turning the hand and the shoulder and the forearm and coming down on top of the ball. And so start off with the, the edge bounces, and then once you get comfortable with that, practice going one, two, three. One, two, three. And what I'm gonna do now is toss the ball, bounce it, and up off the bounce, I'm gonna raise the racket head up and then close the face right square on top of the ball. I'm not gonna do this fast or try to go for power or speed or see how high I can bounce it or anything like that. I'm just gonna practice a tap, a tap, and then bounce and close the racket on top of the, the ball. So edge, edge, top of the ball. And so I'm doing that by simply turning my forearm, my shoulder, my hand, my, really the entire chain from my shoulder down, the whole thing is rotating to get the racket face on top of the ball. So what you wanna see happen here is the ball come down and then bounce straight up. What you don't wanna see is your racket come down and the ball bounce out away from you. If that happens, you've gone back to a push and you're just pushing the ball out away from you, as opposed to rotating the racket head and the racket face so that the strings fall flat on top of the ball. So one more time, edge, edge, and then straight on top. And once you get pretty good at that and you're starting to flush the top of the ball and the ball is going straight down and straight up, you can start to accelerate it a little bit and see if you can get the ball to bounce straight up in the air so that it has some height to it and comes right back down to where you started again. That's the indicator that the strings were flat on top of the ball. If you go down and the ball bounces forwards or backwards or right or left, then your strings were angled someplace else. It's important to start practicing finding the very top of the ball because that's how we create that spike that we did over here. Slightly different angle, but same kind of principle. So now that we've got the feel for kind of the, the nuance of what's happening here with the shoulder, the forearm, the hand, let's go to the net. And now we're gonna start practicing making this kind of a real life overhead hit. If you like what you're seeing and you're serious about improving your game, I highly recommend you go to EssentialTennisAcademy.com. This is the inside of the members area and within Academy, there's all these different categories of coaching, tons of different lesson modules that cover every part of the game. And you can check it out for free right now at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. 
So what we did a moment ago is practicing that snapping motion. And by the way, I should have mentioned it before. What we're not doing here is using the wrist to snap the hand forwards. And this is what a lot of players get confused about is they use more of a forehand ground stroke grip, set the racket up behind the ball, and then try to use their wrist to snap the racket head. A, that is dramatically weaker than using the shoulder and the forearm and the hand to turn the racket and snap it on this axis, rotating around the arm instead of flexing the wrist forwards. Number two, you're gonna hurt your wrist. You're just going to injure yourself if you use that kind of motion repetitively again and again and you try to accelerate it. So now that we've got the hang of that, we're gonna take that same motion, edge, edge, and snap, and we're gonna to start to practice it up here. So what I'm gonna do is just stand about arm's length away from the net real close. You can just practice this with a basket of balls at your local court. You don't need a ball machine or a coach or anything. And from here, if you just toss to yourself out in front, the goal is to find the edge and then release the racket head and snap the racket head on top of the ball. And so doing that just calmly and smoothly and slowly at first, it's gonna look like this. And you'll notice I've put a little uh, object in the way. This bench over here, what I don't wanna do, what I don't wanna see is hit the ball and either hit over the top of the bench or under the bench or, ooh, nice, or hit the bench, you know, in general. My goal here is to hit in front of the bench and have the ball bounce clear over the top of the bench. And I've placed it four, five, six feet inside the service line, so that's really kind of squeezing me. And the only way for me to avoid it is to really release the racket head and catch the top of the ball, snapping the racket head on top of the ball at, a good, at a, enough of an angle to bounce it down and then up over the top of the, the bench. So let me go through a couple of these uh, really smoothly. I'll just start with my racket back in like a, a trophy bows kind of position. I'll toss and then come down and release the racket head. And so my goal is to snap the racket head just like I practiced going down into the court. Now I'm doing it upwards and then releasing the face into the top of the ball. And so this progression will start to get you comfortable with this release in an overhand position. The other practice drills were just to get you familiar with the motion in general. And once you kind of start getting a good feel for this, you can start accelerating it. And now my goal is to hit the back curtain or the back fence on a bounce. And that's gonna take like a medium kind of swing to get it to that point. And only once you feel really comfortable with this, and I highly recommend you video yourself to see exactly what you're doing here with your hand, your forearm, and your wrist, then you can really start to accelerate it and see if you can challenge yourself to bounce the ball actually over the, the back fence or the back curtain. And that takes a significant amount of acceleration and effort with the right technique to square the ball, I'm sorry, square the racket on top of the ball and spike it downwards enough to actually clear the, the back fence. And then eventually with a ball machine or a practice partner, you can actually try to practice this with a feed, which is significantly harder. And now, you have to time it all and use the correct mechanics to snap the racket head and come down on top of the ball. So a whole bunch of little micro steps here, but most tennis players need this because they're stuck in that pushing kind of approach. So if this whole process has been helpful, the explanations have been helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. If you follow these instructions, you do these drills and you get the hang of that release and that snap, your overhead power and efficiency and how effective it is is going to dramatically increase. I hope you're excited for that. I hope you do the work. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.